super fired up. You know, it's one of those games you saw before the as the schedules came out. It's like, yeah, I think there's a good chance that we'll be in uh, Tuscaloosa for that one. But uh, you know, everybody makes a big deal about the playoff, and games aren't um, as important as they were with a 14 playoff. I don't believe that. Both teams need to know what they have, and they're going to be challenged in ways that only these two teams can challenge each other. So. Um, I think it's interesting the narratives of how good Alabama looked their last game out and, and how not good Georgia looked. So plenty to prove uh, for the road team. We know the history there. We know that there's a different coach on one side. So uh, as excited as we've been for a game. Uh, but again, like going back and knowing that these two teams are going to play a regular season here uh, and we're going to be in the top five is, is awesome. It's almost been two decades since Alabama was a home dog. Yeah. Uh, were you surprised to see? I don't know if it moved or not, but were you surprised to see uh, – them start out at least as a home dog? Uh, not surprised. Like when you think about it and you knew what Georgia had coming back and uh, you thought about the coaching change, uh, I don't think it was a surprise. It was just like, hey, this could be a possibility. And then you do the math and it is 2007. It's like, wow, Coach Saban's first year. You know, that's that was times were different then. You know, it's a little different, but I, I really think it's a pickup game. Uh, both teams are more than capable of what they've shown. Georgia obviously getting healthier and having guys that they didn't have against Kentucky. Alabama, I think, really showed what they what they thought they were going to have. You know, going into week one, they didn't have the offensive line until that game in Madison where you have Pritchett at right tackle and then you have um, Proctor at left tackle and Booker's in his spot. Railsford's been awesome uh, as a fill-in. Uh, looks like he's put on some pounds, which I thought was going to be a key because he did play pretty light last year in Washington. and knowing the size of the guys he's going to take on in this conference. Uh, but he's been spectacular. He really has. I think he's gotten better every game. Uh, so that it, it makes sense. But, again, I, I mean, I think I saw it already went down to one this morning. So, I mean, if it keeps coming, home team, people love that stuff. Uh, so I can see I can see it being a pick-em. But how, that, that's the way I have it. How difficult is it to evaluate, too, when he kind of looks like both teams might be holding a, a little bit back and we haven't seen – a full healthy side on each one, then maybe they're holding some back, you know, from the start of the SEC. Play. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's really tough going back and watching the tape of Georgia. You know, the offense is there. You know, you get backed up. You're trailing. You're on the road. Your defense doesn't have everybody, but they're, they, they battle their butts off to keep them in the game. And then Carson made throws. The thing that gets lost in that is I think Kentucky's really, really good on defense. Uh, so they provided challenges. It was their Super Bowl. You know, they looked as bad as they could against South Carolina, and they came out and they gave an A effort. And Georgia still did what they did what it needed to do to get the win. But I expected better um, Carson Beck. You know, it seemed a little hesitant, got surprised on, on some blitzes. The offensive line definitely got some, you know, on the road, it's, it's to live another down. You know you have that defense to rely on. So I thought he played to the game plan there and then made plays when they had to. So I think the big matchup, obviously both lines of scrimmage, uh, but I think Georgia's going to want to see if that Alabama could, could tackle in space, uh, both sides for that matter. I think that's a, a big part of the game. You know, you think about these two teams, you think about the defenses, I think the offenses have more than, you know, they're they're pretty darn capable. Uh, so I, I do expect a lot of, I, I expect both teams to be in the 20s at least. What's been the biggest takeaway if from your end of being around Nick Saban a, a lot more, being on the game day team? What's the biggest thing you've learned, I guess, about How him? How smart of a man he is. Yeah. I don't care what the topic is. Uh, you know, we were talking about other teams, watching tape, NIL, um, everything. Uh, you know, quarterback situations, people playing different quarterbacks. The thoughts and the experience that he has and knowing that he can rely on what happened and then it comes to fruition. This conversation last year or last week about Florida and Florida State where Florida doesn't have any alignment in their university. And that's, you know, if you've gone through – five coaches and none of them had success maybe it's not the coach you know but a coach could say that especially the greatest one of all time so uh just I, I mean smart every situation every every possible deal that we've come across for a show's sake he's there and it's outgoing and when he speaks there's not a peep in the room everybody's trying to get smarter and it's because of him how often do you catch the lighter side of him? Is there the moments in between? I know he's really serious, but how often does he kind of show that? Uh, more than more than I thought. You know, it's you know I think it's it's we're not. I don't know if we're intimidated, but there's a lot that comes with college game day. <laughs> uh, you see the trucks here. You see the the sets of the space we take up. There's a lot, and when you go into a room and it's 
you know, 12 people in a Zoom call, you know, I think people are, all right, I gotta see what I got here. So I think it's just getting comfortable. He's gotten more comfortable and it's been, gets more fun every week. It's been great. As a sports betting analyst, what do you expect the spread to kind of look like tomorrow? Kind of had to guess that you think they might have more passing or rushing yards compared to Oh, uh, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about that with, uh, you know, coach is gonna dial up uh, tomorrow on the show what they did in the SEC championship game with design quarterback runs to offset Georgia's defense. So uh, immediately it made me think, what's Miller gonna run for, right? Because with when you tack on the design runs, which you saw at Wisconsin, it's it's a total headache for the defense. Now, Georgia's had two weeks. They got to see some of that against Wisconsin on tape. They know what happened to them in the SEC championship game. Uh, I, I think both quarterbacks are gonna throw. I think there's gonna be more offense than defense. I really, I just, from a play, playmaker standpoint, this game has it where it feels like, um, you know, in, in previous games, all the focus has been on the NFL talent on the defensive side. Now, I mean, I saw one thing going into the season, it's totally changed because guys are healthy for Alabama. But Alabama didn't have like one mock first rounder on the defensive side. That's obviously changed um, with what they put on the field the first couple weeks. But I, no, I, would, I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being a pick'em game. I really, I really, I mean, that stadium's worth some points for sure, but uh, the talent Georgia has also, and the, uh, again, the spot that they're in, uh, I don't think Kirby Smart could be in a better situation, knowing that they still are undefeated, but they learned a lot about their team and what they have and maybe what they don't have. So I think adjusting to that, having two weeks to prepare is, is monstrous. So I, I'd say pick them. What are some of your favorite props that you've seen? Maybe some interesting props. Uh, I have not. I usually wait till Friday evening to, <laughs> to, to check out that. Georgia struggled against uh, Kentucky. Do you, do you foresee a different Georgia team tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, I do. I, I think a more uh, – the offensive line, uh, you know, they roll guys. I know uh, Rattledge is out, but the way they roll guys, I don't think that's going to be that big of a factor. Now, we'll say Alabama, the program guys that they have, those are multiple-year guys that had a lot of hype coming in, the defensive tackles with, with uh, Smith and those guys. They played way above what I thought – or what they put on tape, I would say, in years previous. So that matchup for sure, because when you look at Carson Beck, going back and look at it, he was really uncomfortable. And that was because of Kentucky and what they did. And now Alabama gets to see that, they get to adjust and put their own spin on things. But I think Georgia's offense will be way more focused. I think running the ball will be a priority. You know, when you're down on the road, you know, at Kentucky and they're dicing you up with blitzes, it's hard to get that run game going because you know you gotta throw the football to get back in the game. So I did think you, saw what Georgia's real game plan was, I think it would be more focused uh, this week with having some balance and getting their guys the ball. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right.